This is your Fire Sports Report from Southeastern University with your host, Donnie Smith. Hello and welcome to Fire Sports Report. My name is Donnie Smith. We're talking Southeastern University cross country today on the show. Head coach Paul Kurtz is our guest. Coach, you guys are three races into the season on the men's and the women's side. Have you been pleased with what you've seen from these groups so far? Yeah, I think that uh, they're doing very well. We're still somewhat early in the season, if you can believe that, even though we're halfway. Uh, we're just getting to the point where we're starting to think about racing hard and, and really trying to beat people that we're hoping to see later on in the season. Uh, training's gone along really well this, to this point of the season, and I think uh, it's time to start really showing some results now. This is the fourth year of cross country at Southeastern <coughs> University. You started this program four years ago. Walk us through the infancy stages of Southeastern cross country. What were some of the challenges that you had early on? Well, first of all, just getting people. Um, the, the first year that we were here, uh, I didn't even get hired until right around the time that we were really supposed to be coming onto campus and that sort of thing. So I was just looking for, for runners on campus that were already here. Uh, I got lucky and had a few people that looked at us last minute and decided to come. And, um, so that was a big challenge to begin with, and then just from that point on, just you know, building a culture and, and having uh, the students buy into my, my philosophy of coaching, and things are going along pretty well now. So now you've had a chance to bring in runners, recruit runners. What's been your recruiting philosophy? How, does it, how do you go about finding runners, and what does it take to be a member of the Southeastern Cross Country team? Well, I think there's a couple of different things I really look for. Uh, that, I'm open to anyone. I, I really believe that, that with running, it's something that anyone can get better at it. And if you have a love and a desire to, to run and to, to get better, you can become better. So if there's a person out there that likes to run or is a cross country runner in high school and maybe didn't think that they could ever run in college, I'm not opposed to someone like that being on my team because they can get better. Um, I'm living proof of that. I was one of those kids. Um, but I also look for the obviously good runners in high school as well and I'm hoping that those people will, will look at us and I'm searching them out and talking to coaches and um, sending emails and that kind of thing and visiting races and, and meeting up with people that way. So it's kind of two different types of recruiting. When it comes to training some of those better runners that you have and even some of the ones that you bring in that you kind of take a chance on had had decent times but see some potential in, kind of walk us through your training philosophy and, and some of the naming convention that you have. What, what are your practices like on a daily basis? Well, the basis of all distance running basically is running distance. So you have to get used to that first. So during the summertime, they're doing a lot of base training, we call it, a lot of mileage and that kind of thing, building that up so that they can handle the volume of, of work that they're going to be doing during the season. When the harder workouts come into play, that, that's important or they'll start getting injured or they'll burn out too quickly. So that's, that's an important part. Once they come into the season, we kind of hold that mileage up there for a little while and uh, start doing harder workouts, interval workouts. Um, I came up with a, a kind of a, actually it was my assistant coach that came up with it at my old school, of the Taco Bell uh, training levels, if you want to call them. And we have different levels of, of running. So we have hot, medium, and fire. And uh, actually added Inferno. I think there used to be an Inferno sauce at one point. Uh, but those are different types of, of paces that they're supposed to run. And it just makes it a little bit more fun than just saying run a tempo run or run distance or whatever. So, Just for a little bit of shock value, <coughs> what's a typical mileage week for some of your top runners? Um, I'd say on the average, most of them are running between 45 and 50, but I do have some that are running 70 and some that are running a little less than 40, 35, 30. That was miles and not meters, right? Yeah, that's miles. <laughs> Let's talk about coaching two teams at once. You're the men's and women's head coach. You've got to set up sometimes two different workouts. What are some of the challenges and what are some of the neat things about having two teams under your control? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is it's, it just adds a lot of different types of people. I mean, I, men and women are different, but they also are, are very much the same. And um, there, there's things about a man that makes a woman come out better as far as how they act and how they can perform in, in a run and vice versa. So I think it's, it's kind of a great thing to have that balance. Um, I love coaching both. I can't have, I've never had the, well, I shouldn't say that. When I first started coaching, I did coach just the men, but we had the women's team work with us most of the time. And it's just always been a good benefit for our teams, um, especially, I'd say, for training-wise, if you're a faster girl and you want to run with the boys, that's going to push you harder. And if you're a slower boy and you're running with the faster girls, that's going to push you harder. So it always works well in the training part and then emotionally and that kind of stuff. I think it's really good, too. Coach, from a leadership aspect, what, who have been some of the people that you've looked up to or some of the guys that have emerged as leaders on both the men's and women's teams so far? Well, that's kind of been a fun thing to, to see over the last four years as we started the program. I mean, when I first started, I, I didn't know anybody. We didn't know, you know anything about what their leadership would be like. 
um, and I kind of just had to pick people and um, you know sometimes it worked out sometimes it didn't but now we've had some years to kind of see what type of people these are and uh, you know I've got like Kyler who's gonna be talking here in a minute and Emily and uh, uh, you know Michael McCain is one of our chaplains and just a really good spiritual leader on our team um, boy it's bad for when I not think about names, but you know, most of my upperclassmen, I think of them as leaders. I don't, I don't like to have necessary titles for everybody, but we do have those titles for some of them. But I really look at my juniors and seniors as being the leaders of my team, and I expect them to be leaders. Head cross country coach at Southeastern University, Paul Kurtz is our guest here on Fire Sports Report. For more on cross country, let's send it over to Sam Silver, who's got Kyler Kathman and Emily Scott. Thank you, Donnie. I'm here with seniors Emily Scott and Kyler Kathman. So Kyler, you have been in every race in program history. So what has it been like to be on this team from the beginning and watch it evolve? It's really crazy that it's already been four years here at Southeastern, but it's been a lot of fun, you know? Um, as a freshman, I kind of made a last minute decision to come to Southeastern when I heard that they were getting Coach Kurtz and the new program. And um, just ever since, like I said, time's just flown by, but after freshman year, I got to go to the high school state meet and help coach recruit new guys and be able to see people that would fit into our culture here at Southeastern and um, just try to recruit those fastest guys possible that were still the good Christian guys that we were looking for that would meet the mold of the team. But um, it's, been, it's been really cool to see it evolve. That's great. And Emily, you're kind of on the different side of things. You transferred here. So what has that been like for you? Yeah, um, when I was looking to transfer to a Christian school in Florida, I pulled up all of the schools that had cross country. And I was so impressed by just the first season here at Southeastern that it was a no brainer for me. I knew exactly that this was where I wanted to be. And just coming from a program where coach, the coach didn't look at you as individuals, they just looked at the first girls on the team. I really appreciate coming into this atmosphere where I'm cared about as an athlete and as a student in my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And you guys have both been leaders on this team for some time now. So what is it like being in that leadership role and having younger runners look up to you? It, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, with the new freshmen that we have this year. They're, they're pretty fun, but it's, it's cool being able to go to Bible studies and know that you're a senior, junior on the team, and that those guys are looking up to you and watching, you know, your study habits at class and watching your spiritual life and, you know, how, what kind of effort you're putting into each race and how you act on the team trips. So it's fun being a leader. I would say that for me, it's a lot of fun. And Emily, what are your thoughts on leadership? Yeah, it definitely keeps you accountable for all aspects of your life because, again, they're looking at you, um, how you're doing in the classroom, how you're doing at practice, if you're giving it all. Um, in your Bible studies, they're always looking up to you, and it's cool to set an example for the younger people to shape the team in the future and get them ready to be leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what is your favorite part about running for Coach Kurtz? My favorite part about running for Coach Kurtz is that he just cares about you as more than an athlete. He likes to meet with you weekly, he gives you goals to go over and he checks in with you, how you're doing in school, how you're doing with your family, how you're doing in um, running, obviously. Um, he just really cares about you more as an athlete and you're really like, I call him my dad because like, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, what about you, Kyler? There's so many things I love about Coach, you know, just four years spending with him, I, I feel like I know him like, like a parent, like she said, like a father figure, but, um, Coach is just so laid back. I can go and sit down in his office any day of the week whenever I want to. Just text him, hey, I'm coming over and, you know, talk to him about life. Talk to him about that test that I almost failed or how, you know, things are going with my family and how my legs are feeling or whatever. Just anything. He's very flexible with us and really wants to invest in us more than just running. But then the other thing about Coach is that everyone sees him as, you know, just this calm, laid back, quiet guy. <laughs> and he is, but once you get him out there on the cross country course, like Coach is intense and he wants the best for us. So he's one of the loudest screaming coaches at every single race. <laughs> That's so funny. And so cross country is such a different sport than any other sport. And what is your most favorite part about it? Oh, it's a love-hate relationship, definitely. <laughs> um, my favorite thing about cross country is a lot of the time you're not just pushing to be better than the other runners. You're trying to be better than like the best version of you that you were previously were. So it's really awesome. You can't remain stagnant in running. Like You have to get better or you're just not going to go anywhere. So it's really challenging and you really grow personally too. Yeah, and what's your favorite part? I like the fact that you can compare your performances to other people without it being a statistic, you know, like most sports are based off of statistics, but ours is based off of time. Mm -hmm. So you can see exactly whether you're faster than somebody, you know, cross country, you have different courses and things like that. 
but your time speaks for itself. Whatever you've run, whatever your personal record is, as far as time goes, you can really be able to compare yourself to other athletes. Yeah, and what are some of the goals that you guys have for each of your teams for the rest of the season? All right, I'll go first. I would say, you know, we want to be top two at conference this year. Coming in as a freshman, I can't remember exactly what we placed, but it definitely wasn't top five, probably even. And now this year, we've got a really good shot to get second, possibly be pushing uh, SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, for that you know conference championship. So our team is young. We have a lot of new freshmen, but we also have three or four seniors that are the fastest the school's ever had. So um, we have the potential. Everybody just has to be healthy. And if we are, I think that we could really push SCAD for that championship. Wow. And what about the girls' side? Yeah, the goals for the women's side um, definitely get close to SCAD. I think through the comparisons that we've done, we can really get really close to them and possibly even take them at conference. So really just um, doing well at conference, second or higher, and making it to nationals would be a huge goal for the women's team. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Good luck to you guys on Friday and the rest of your season. And we're going to send it back to Donnie for more with Coach Kurtz. Welcome back to Fire Sports Report. We're talking Southeastern Cross Country with head coach Paul Kurtz. Last week, coach, pretty neat recognition for two of your runners. Stephen Pena, Sun Conference Men's Runner of the Week. On the women's side, Megan Fitzgerald was named Runner of the Week. Kind of cool honor for both of those. Kind of talk us about what those two mean to you and, and their races at Florida State. Well, I think it was great for both of them to get it. I, I, it's you know the first time in program history, I think, that it, it, both men and women have won the award in the same week. and. Uh, that was a, a great thing for our program, first of all, but just the fact that, again, they, they work both of them very hard at what they do. Um, Megan's been running really, really well this whole season. She won Runner of the Week a couple weeks ago, and for her to get that again, it's just awesome for her to, to get that recognition. And then Steven has been somebody who's been one of those guys that has just steadily gotten better every year and, and puts a lot of hard work in, and I was glad to see that he also was able to, to receive that, so it was good. Let's talk about the women's team a little more in depth. Beyond Megan, who else has run well for you? Uh, our top three girls right now are running very, very strong. Um, Sydney Ogilvie is our second girl outside of Megan. And uh, then we have Julia Castor, and she's been running very well. She's a freshman. Um, they're all running under 20 minutes right now, and I believe that probably all three of them will run probably under 19 by the end of the season. Um, and then our fourth and fifth right now have kind of been changing places. Uh, Anna and... Um, Ellie and Jordan are kind of like battling between the three of them just to see where they're going to be. And they've been slow, slowly dropping their times too. So that, that's kind of our big area right now that we need to work on is getting them closer to our front three. Over on the men's side of things, what do you like about that group? On the guys, I, I think right now one of the best things that they've got going for them is that they're a pretty tight group um, as far as they're close to each other. Um, in cross country, that's a big help. If you can keep your top five runners together, that's, that's going to only help your score. Uh, what we need to do on the guys' side is just move them faster, get them closer to the front of the races, and uh, some of them need to step out really this weekend and, and see what they can do, and hopefully that will drag the other ones that have been running close to them along with them, and they'll all have faster and closer times together. Big opportunity for you guys coming up on Friday when you head up to Charlotte. You'll be racing at the National Championship site for the NAI. <coughs> Big field, a lot of ranked teams. Give us kind of an overall thought on what this weekend's going to be like for you guys. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a huge meet for us. I, I've been saying to some people that this is probably bigger than any race that we have this season, including our conference race um, up until nationals. And uh, it gives us the opportunity to run against teams that are ranked. And if we can compete with those guys or if we can beat them, uh, that's going to give us a chance to be ranked. And in our sport, you can qualify by being a ranked team as well as by winning your conference. So uh, we have a pretty good team in our conference, SCAD, on the men's and women's side, who probably will win the men's side and the women's, it's going to be pretty close between our women and their women. But, you know, if it doesn't end up that we, we win that conference tournament, we want to have a, a backdoor way of getting to nationals. And this is probably our best opportunity to show Raiders that that's what it's for. So I'm excited about going there. It's a, it's a long trip. It's going to be an expensive trip and hopefully we'll make our work uh, worth our while going there. Well, you mentioned the conference meet, things pretty close on the <laughs> women's side, especially, and then you're going to be hosting the conference meet. So to have it in familiar settings, to have it in your own backyard, do you think that's a little bit of an advantage for you guys? I hope so. Um, we, uh, we do run there quite a bit, so we do know the course fairly well on the ground and, you know, the temperature of this area is going to be used, we're going to be used to that as well. Um, you know, it's always, you're always going to go into a race not knowing exactly what's going to happen, but um, I think the fact that it is our home course and we've been on it a lot more than anybody else has, that definitely gives us an advantage. All right, Coach, as we wrap it up, give us an idea of what it's going to take to see some Southeastern singlets at the course in Nationals coming up in November. 
Well, I'm pretty confident we're going to have someone there. Um, I'm hoping it's more than one person. I really feel we, we should be able to have one on each side at least, and, uh, and maybe two or three on each side if we have a good day. Uh, and on the women's side right now, I think we even have a really strong chance of making it as a team. Um, right now, we're, we're starting to be looked at by the Raiders. We received some votes last week for, for the ratings. And, uh, you know, like I said, this weekend's going to show a lot for them if they can compete with those rated, rated teams. And we hopefully will get one of those votes later on the season if we don't win our conference. Keep up the great work, Coach. Thank you. Paul Kurtz, the head cross-country coach at Southeastern University, has been our guest on Fire Sports Report. Make sure you tune in next week. For all of us at Southeastern, I'm Donnie Smith. Have a great day. This is your Fire Sports Report from Southeastern University. Listen each Thursday for the latest updates on Fire Sports.